It's fourth down for the Pikers. Two yards to go for a first down. They're deep in their own territory. The Pikers never have been a good passing team. They've always picked up the yards on the ground. They don't have a dependable passer. They don't have an outstanding receiver. And the Pikers are up against the best pass defense in football. Right now, the defending champions are playing a six-man defensive backfield. Six of the most alert pass interceptors in football. What play do you think the Pikers quarterback should call? A, go through or around the five-man line to pick up the two yards for a first down. B, kick to get out of the shadow of their own goal. C, pass and take a chance on an interception deep in their own territory. Well, while A or B are the most sensible choices, and a lot of people might groan or grumble when the Pikers' poor passing quarterback goes back to pass, nevertheless, you've got to consider one other thing. With three minutes left, the Pikers are losing six to nothing. So they've got to give up the safe play, even the first down play, to try to get back in the game. Yes, the score is important in football. And the score is important in the world of automobiles. Keep in mind that Plymouth is selling about a million less cars a year than Chevrolet. And when you're behind like that, you've got to take a chance. Maybe give up a few things that people have come to expect in top flight cars. Let's see why. Plymouth had to gamble on grumbles. Through the years, Plymouth built a conservative organization dedicated to just one premise, that a car should run and run well and nothing should interfere. For many, many reasons, Plymouth didn't click. Then, in 55, Plymouth started getting style anxious. Engineers, not used to giving way to style considerations, were forced to compromise. But Plymouth's efforts weren't enough. In 55 and 56, they fell a million cars a year behind Chevrolet. Plymouth needed drastic style overhauling in a hurry. Is it any wonder that the sudden style change philosophy took hold? And if things had to be given up, Things that used to be important, like driving convenience, comfort, performance, economy, and ride, then Plymouth just had to gamble on the grumbles. Just how much Plymouth had to give up in every important area builds to an impressive story. Especially when 57 prospects can have the best, both in style and engineering, in the 57 Chevrolet. Because Chevrolet is the recognized master at combining these qualities. Let's start with driving convenience. How a car shines on the showroom floor is a matter of concern for only so long. How its doors open, its lights light, its seats sit, its windows reveal, its heaters heat, and its steering steers is a matter of importance throughout the life of the car. Let's start with some of the smaller items. For instance, Chevrolet's convenient one key method to operate the ignition as well as all other locks. Contrast this to Plymouth, which requires two keys, one for ignition and door locks, and another for the trunk and glove compartment. And for greater convenience, Chevrolet has self-locking front doors. Furthermore, Plymouth still uses hollow pull-out door handles, which require more effort to operate than Chevrolet's solid button types. In addition, the Plymouth locking mechanism is not protected from water and freezing, as is Chevrolet's. The design of Plymouth's steering wheel and column makes driver entrance and exit difficult and awkward. Besides, the short steering column and low angle of steering wheel location place the wheel almost in the driver's lap. Compare this with Chevrolet's steering wheel and column, which not only permit the driver to enter and leave the car more easily, but also allow for more relaxed seating and easier control of the steering wheel. Chevrolet's easy opening, positive position crank type ventipanes can be accurately adjusted for ventilation comfort. Then, too, there's less chance of water leaks through Chevrolet Vanta panes. But Plymouth still has the push-pull vent windows, which make for awkward vent opening adjustment. And the Plymouth Vanta panes are about half the size of Chevrolet's, thus reducing their ventilation value. Giving Chevrolet drivers more convenience is the centrally located glove compartment. Plymouth's is placed at the extreme right of the instrument panel, where it's unhandy for the driver to reach. What's more, all Chevrolet models have glove compartment locks as standard equipment, while only Plymouth Belvedere's are so equipped. In addition, the compartments of Chevrolet 210 and Bel Air models have lights, while no light is provided in any Plymouth series. Chevrolet does a better job of lighting not only the glove compartment, but the entire car. 
Bel Airs have automatic rear door dome light switches, whereas Plymouth Belvedere's do not. In addition, Chevrolet's dome lights are operated by a switch on the instrument panel, while Plymouth has only a switch on the light itself. Adding to Plymouth inconvenience is the key button type trunk lid, which permits the lid to be closed, but not locked. To lock the Plymouth trunk, it's necessary to fumble with a key. Compare this to Chevrolet's key opening and automatic locking trunk lid. Another big advantage is Chevrolet's one inch high trunk sill. Contrast this to Plymouth's 11.25 inch sill. Loading the Plymouth luggage compartment takes a real muscle man. And look at this. The spare tire is flat on the Plymouth trunk floor, which not only makes it hard to get out, but also reduces usable space. And even with the tire in place, a bolt sticks up to scratch or scar luggage or packages. Chevrolet's gas filler cap is conveniently concealed above the left tail light. Plymouth's, on the other hand, is still located behind the outdated door on the side of the left rear fender, making for paint scratches and fender dents from gasoline hose filler nozzles. Yes, from door handles to gas filler cap, Chevrolet beats Plymouth in convenience. But today's cars must also have riding comfort and handling ease. Let's see what Plymouth had to give up to get its sudden silhouette. Chevrolet's advantages start right with the very foundation because Chevrolet's frame is stiffer and tougher than Plymouth's. Plymouth's frame requires 64 pounds more weight to achieve almost the same rigidity as Chevrolet's. The Chevrolet frame is more rugged because the side rail height is 4.5 inches as compared to Plymouth's 3.5 inches. And in frame design, height is one of the most important dimensions because it helps determine the supporting strength for car weight. Besides this frame advantage, Chevrolet has three inch longer rear springs. Chevrolet's longer springs control wheel bounce better and make for better car stability. Plymouth now uses the outrigger rear suspension, which was a Chevrolet first two years ago. Chevrolet's ball bearing steering gives easier turning and longer life without excessive steering wheel play. However, Plymouth's old-fashioned worm and roller type of steering gear makes for harder steering and has greater wearing tendencies. Furthermore, Chevrolet is easier to handle around curves and tight spots because its 18-inch diameter steering wheel is easier to turn than Plymouth's smaller 17-inch wheel. Moreover, Chevrolet has greater maneuverability. Shorter wheelbase and overall length make it easier to handle when parking, in traffic, and on highways, country roads, and driveways. Inside the Plymouth, the high transmission tunnel in the front passenger compartment forces the middle passenger to sit with knees almost against chin. And this makes the Plymouth seats uncomfortably hard at the center. Chevrolet's lower tunnel lets the middle passenger stretch out in real comfort. And for 1957, Plymouth makes a big advertising splash about its anti-dive braking. This is only more evidence that Plymouth has little that's really new. Chevrolet's anti-dive braking was an automotive first back in 1955. Furthermore, Plymouth uses a complex system called torsionaire to achieve its anti-dive. Whether it's rear springs or steering gear, Chevrolet has the advantage in riding comfort and handling ease. But that's not all. Chevrolet moves even further ahead of Plymouth in 1957 when it comes to performance and operating economy. For example, Chevrolet's modern overhead valve Blue Flame 6, with its easier breathing and gas-saving characteristics, develops 140 horsepower. Plymouth's six-cylinder engine is an outdated L-head design, which only delivers 132 horsepower. More of Plymouth's years behind engineering reflects itself in Plymouth's mechanical valve lifters, which require periodic adjustment to keep them from being noisy. Compare this to Chevrolet's quiet hydraulic valve lifters that adjust themselves automatically and assure accurate valve timing for better performance and quiet operation. And more of Chevrolet's efficiency in V8 design shows up in higher compression ratios. Chevrolet's Super Turbo Fire 283 V8s have a compression ratio of 9.5 to 1. And Chevrolet Ramjet V8s have as much as 10.5 to 1 compression ratio. Contrast these to Plymouth's top compression ratio of 8.5 to 1. 
Higher compression ratios give more power and economy from every drop of gasoline. And in 1957, Chevrolet again proves that it's the leader in the industry with a new kind of power, fuel injection. Plymouth will be a long time in catching up with this new sensation in instant power and response. The exceptional efficiency of ramjet V8s makes possible up to 283 horsepower from 283 cubic inches of displacement. Compare this output of one horsepower per cubic inch to 235 horsepower from 301 cubic inches of displacement by Plymouth's top V8, the Fury 301. That's a less efficient 0.78 horsepower per cubic inch. And Plymouth uses a paper element air cleaner. When the humidity is high, dirt and dust will cake up in this element and rob the engine of air and power. Contrast this to Chevrolet's modern oil bath air cleaner, which filters out dirt and dust with the help of oil. Besides doing a superior filtering job, it also resists clogging and is not affected by moisture in the air. Furthermore, Chevrolet's wedge-shaped V8 combustion chambers create swirling of the fuel-air mixture, which not only promotes more efficient burning, but also helps to keep the chambers free of carbon deposits. Plymouth's dome-shaped chambers do not have these swirl-creating characteristics. In addition, the piston stroke of Chevrolet V8s is almost 5% shorter than Plymouth's. Also, the stroke of Chevrolet's Blue Flame 6 is nearly 15% less than Plymouth's six-cylinder power plant. Results? Less wear on cylinder walls, pistons, and rings, and also reduced friction and heat. Chevrolet's harmonic balancers on V8 engines dampen out engine vibrations, giving smooth engine performance. The 1957 Plymouth V8s, which do not have a balancer at the front of the crankshaft, are subjected to excessive vibrations. More Chevrolet engine smoothness comes from its four-point engine mounting system, which cushions power plant movements effectively. Compare this to Plymouth's three-point arrangement, which lacks that extra balance point. Chevrolet's advanced distributor on V8s permits the breaker points to be accurately adjusted while the engine is running. Plymouth, however, does not offer this feature. But that's not all. Oil changes with any Chevrolet V8 are cheaper than with any Plymouth V8. Chevrolets need one quart less at each change. And all Chevrolet V8s require less antifreeze when winterizing. Chevrolet's V8 cooling capacity is an economical 16 quarts, whereas Plymouth's is 20 quarts. And the Chevrolet buyer has a greater selection of horsepowers to choose from. Chevrolet offers eight engines of 140, 162, 185, 220, 245, 250, 270, and 283 horsepower. Plymouth has a limited selection of four engines of 132, 190, 215, and 235 horsepower ratings. But Chevrolet's efficient engines are only part of its outstanding performance story for 1957. Chevrolet offers the all-new Super Smooth Turbo Glide automatic transmission, which uses no gear shifting. This year, Plymouth offers Torque Flight, a three-speed automatic transmission. Plymouth claims this is something new, but we all know that three-speed automatic transmissions were available on other cars as far back as 1938. And Chevrolet's automatic transmissions are more convenient to use. Power Glide and Turbo Glide selector levers are located on the steering column, where they can be easily operated with the right hand on the steering wheel. Contrast this to Plymouth's Power Flight and Torque Flight push-button controls at the left of the instrument panel. The driver must use his left hand to select transmission driving ranges. This is awkward, since most drivers are right-handed. And the Plymouth driver actually has to turn to look to the left, too. Chevrolet has another advantage in rocking out of snow and mud. It's much easier with Turbo Glide because the selector lever moves from drive to reverse without lifting. However, rocking with power flight or torque flight is almost impossible. The low and reverse buttons with power flight and the reverse and one buttons with torque flight are too far apart to be pushed in quickly for that necessary transmission sudden shifting. Going down hills with Turbo Glide is safer 
because its hill retarder feature uses oil in addition to engine compression for more downhill braking. Plymouth Power Flight and Torque Flight must use low range. Yes, from engines to transmissions, Chevrolet has it all over Plymouth in performance and operating economy. But built-in safety, durability, and dependability are just as important in car value. Chevrolet also excels in these factors. For instance, Chevrolet uses two well-lighted indicators to indicate whether the right-hand or left-hand turn signal is on. However, Plymouth has only one indicator to show both right and left turning signals. So the inexperienced or less careful driver can't be sure which signal is being used. This might confuse not only Plymouth drivers, but also surrounding traffic. Then too, Chevrolet's precision-aimed headlights are more easily adjusted to give better driver visibility at night than Plymouth's old-fashioned types. Aiming lugs permit aiming of Chevrolet headlights even when they're unlighted. This precision aiming helps reduce the blinding of oncoming drivers and directs light where it's needed, on the road. And Chevrolet's durability features are carried out throughout the car. For instance, Chevrolet has a center roof bow and double wall construction in the cowl and luggage compartment. None of this extra body strength is in the suddenly styled 57 Plymouth. What's more, Chevrolet's door weather stripping is attached with both cement and metal clips. Compare this extra durability with Plymouth stripping, which is cemented on only. In addition, both the front and rear bumpers of Chevrolet are massive three-piece units that may be replaced individually. Plymouth's bumpers, on the other hand, are one-piece stampings, which do not have this easy repair feature offered by Chevrolet. And notice the buck tooth effect below the center portion of the Plymouth bumper. The radiator is directly behind the sheet metal buck teeth. Thus, other cars, especially those with trailer hitches, can cause expensive radiator damage when they back into a Plymouth. Plymouth's lack of safety, durability, and dependability features proves that it's far behind Chevrolet. And just as quickly, Plymouth falls behind in those extra quality aspects that give Chevrolet the big bonus in value. For example, Chevrolet offers a wider choice of models. Chevrolet has 20 models, including the Corvette. Please like and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos.